What's up my guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Nandan and I'm an industrial engineering junior at UW-Madison and this channel is all about college stuff and my life and short films because I make a lot of stuff. So if this content interests you, consider subscribing. Today's video is going to be about 5 tips to help you ace this semester online. Coming up. That was so weird. Now the first and the most important tip is to make a schedule and actually stick to it. Now I know you might have heard this in more places, in other places you know, literally every productivity channel might say the exact same thing, but bear with me here. So this semester most professors are making their classes asynchronous because for them it's easier to batch record all these videos and then just send it off to be edited and uploaded onto whatever media sharing platform your university uses. But as students this is pretty disincentivizing to us because there's no fixed time that we have to sit down to watch the lectures, so if you just open up a calendar system or whatever you use to make to like keep track of what you have to do if you open that up and you see it empty you're just like well i don't have any work for today i could just drink and sleep again sadly it doesn't work that way it's college it's not heaven so the easiest way to make this work for you is to set aside blocks of time for every subject that you have if it's asynchronous and then put it into a calendar system color code it the same way it is on canvas if that works for you and just put it on a calendar system either google calendars outlook anything that's synced across all your devices so this incentivizes you more to actually work on those classes rather than just leaving everything for the last minute now the second way you can do that is just by handwriting your schedule now now you'd spend more effort like handwriting your schedule I would argue as compared to like putting it into Google calendars so handwriting it might just further incentivize you to actually work on what you have to work on. Now the second tip is to make a to-do list and actually stick to it. Yes I know you've heard this on every productivity channel but hear me out. Most people start by making a to-do list literally just by listing what they have to do and then they leave it at that but this is the most unrealistic for sure guaranteed way to make sure that you don't work. Rather than creating a to-do list by just listing what you have to do what if you did this instead. Organize everything you have to do by 1. The time it takes to do that task. 2. Your due date depending on whichever one is due the earliest. And 3. Am I? And 3. Whatever subject you hate the most. Do that first. It doesn't only have to be school work. It could be even the most like menial things that you have to do. So do the task you hate first and then do the rest because that way you're like done with the worst thing in the day and you're just like well I mean everything else would just fall into place because that's life. Similarly, you could use it for the others. So you could either do your tasks according to whichever one is due first, or you could do the one that takes the most time first and then divide it into chunks like that are more doable as compared to the rest. Now, the third tip is to realistically think about your time off. Some of us end up working too much or don't realize when we need a break, or we realize we need a break and we're just perpetually stuck in that. So the best thing to do in this case is to schedule your breaks first and then revolve your work around your breaks itself. But remember that this could go wrong very fast. You need to be strict with yourself in terms of like when you schedule that time and whether you actually get done with your work before you, you know, get into your scheduled breaks. So tread finally when you're doing this. What I recommend is to think about the most realistic time that you and your friends could get together or that you could spend on your own just as a break itself. Schedule that first and then, you know, make your to-do list and put all your tasks around whichever one is the hardest to do first. Get that done and then everything else will just kind of fall into place. What was the fourth tip? So given that most of us are working from home and like, you know, studying from home these days, it can be difficult to distinguish between what work is and what relaxing is, which brings us to the fourth tip. Tune your environment to the work you're doing. Now I do four things on this desk primarily. One, study for college. Two, edit, shoot and plan videos. Three is my campus job, which is now remote. And the fourth one is Netflix and chilling with myself. So the first way you can tune your environment to the work you're doing is by changing the color of the lights behind. Now this might seem like a very small thing you do but trust me, it really works. When you're doing anything that requires intense focus, it's recommended to switch your light colors to either white or blue because those are proven to help increase focus. It prevents you from falling asleep because usually warm colors like the, uh, you know, like if you switch these to like yellow or something, you might be able to focus less as compared to switching it to blue. The same way, it might be really beneficial to disable night shift or to disable true tone on your laptop if you do have it. The second tip to help tune your environment for the work you're doing is by keeping a different desktop for each task that you have to do. So you know how you can switch between desktops. So each of those allows you to properly organize your Chrome tabs, your Word documents, anything that you have to work on. So anytime you want to switch between a task, all you just have to do is, is swipe one direction and you're already there for the next thing that you have to do. So wrapping us up and bringing us to our fifth tip is if none of this works, force yourself to use the Pomodoro technique. 
week. Forcing yourself to do a task for even 10 minutes at the least will surely help you get going. Now there are obviously times when all of us kind of fall into a rut. It's happened to me so many times where I just don't feel like working. So if you just sit down, put your phone and do not disturb and just force yourself to work for those 10 minutes, it can be very, very incentivizing for you to start working on anything that you have. My recommendation is to set a timer for 10 minutes first and start with the toughest tasks that you have. Really force yourself to start focusing on it so then once you get even a little bit ahead, you will automatically start thinking, hmm, maybe I don't have to take a break. Maybe I could just go on for the next like 15 minutes to try to finish this. So anytime you finish one Pomodoro session, remember to reward yourself. It's kind of important. Now, if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for sticking around. I love you. And I will give you a sixth bonus tip. Set aside time for actually reading emails because nowadays you get so many emails from any sort of university. It's so pissing off, but like you, you have to. Maybe there's some important Canvas notifications that you missed, or maybe your professor sent you some email about like an upcoming test or a deadline that's been shifted behind because your professor's kind of a dick. If you get any of those, it's really important to sift through all your emails, which reminds me I should probably do that because the semester starting soon. Alright, that's it for this video guys. If you really enjoyed this content, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell and the like button and comment and do all that stuff. It helps the YouTube algorithm get this video out because YouTube is kind of a small YouTubers like me. So, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. I'm gonna end this with bloopers and a dope ass song as I usually do. Peace. Love ya. What am I supposed to do now? Edit this video. Ah, yeah. So much fun.